Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Gratitude and encouragement is as important as constructive criticism. Welcome to The Advocate, your weekly reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. Today, I'm not on the attack. I'm exploring the response to a previous advocacy. Did Governor Sawolu hear me? He probably did. Chuka is illustrating David Diop's poem, Africa, My Africa, as a wake-up call to the current African youth, oh, this is reawakening my poetic side. Jumoke is on a quest to draw attention and actions to making life easier for those living with disabilities among us. For you, who makes his debut today, is saying, most of us don't hate corruption. We only hate the fact that we are not the beneficiaries. Once a journalist, they say, always a journalist. The journalistic side of treasure is taking on regulatory bodies today who seems to have failed in their duties so much that the Nigerian lawmakers are now on the quest to sanitize the profession. Sit back, your five panelists are here and eager to present your Sunday dose of provoking thoughts with no hold bar after the break. Leadership means duty, honor, country, Criticism, character, and a listening ear to the voices of the led. Did Governor Sawolu hear me? Democracy, they say, is a constant job of interrogation, education, explanation, listening, and communication. That's why I showed that when governor's aides seek the head of people for daring to criticize their boss. As a leader, criticism should motivate you rather than distract you. The Lagos State Governor has shown through his recent action in respect of my advocacy on abandoned project, that he would rather listen to criticism with intent to understand and remedy his faults with a mindset to respond to press releases that are full of half-truth and innuendos. Sometimes last year, I pointed the governor to the fact that considering the non-motorability of the Maituto Badagri Expressway due to a road construction that has taken an eternity to build Despite the fact that the current Minister of Works, Babatunde Raji Fashola, is a former governor of Lagos State, and also the Speaker of House of Rep, Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, a lawmaker from Lagos State. I stated in my advocacy then that the dredging of the water channel from Badagri to CMS, as outlined in two phases of Ebuti Ojo to CMS and Ebuti Ojo to Badagri, was abandoned by his government. The governor heard me clearly and rather than respond through a press conference, as some would have done, he responded through his action by correcting what I complain of. Indeed, his action has shown clearly that he took my advocacy to heart by not being fixated only on road construction in an aquatic state like Lagos, but also ready to harness the aquatic transportation potentials of the state. He has immediately commenced the dredging of the water channel from a booty or jaw to Badagri, which I complained was abandoned then. You see, government, they listen when we talk. So no fear. Talk your own. They go here. Majority of the residents in this area were still looking, looking forward to the federal government completing the My Two to Badagri Road are very elated with the dredging of the water channel. It is their belief that this development will not only ease transportation and movement of goods and services to and from Badagri to CMS, but also help the durability of their boat, considering the new depth of the channel. They are also of the firm belief that considering the current depth 
of the water after dredging, it would be easier for it to accommodate water from rain channel in Okokomaiko, Alaba, and Janiki, thereby reducing and easing the flooding in these areas of the state. You can call it using one stone to keep multiple beds. You won't be wrong. While well, I say kudos to the governor for doing more of listening than talking and matching same with action, rather than pointing accusing fingers, I would advocate that His Excellency should take it a, for, a notch further by dredging the water channel from Maryland through Ifako Bridge to Lagos Island. This will also bring back the nostalgia feeling of navigating by boat from Maryland to Lagos Island through the Odoyala Rope Channel, which got its name from the famous arrow tie and die that actually originated there from. This channel was known then for commuting passengers from Maryland to Lagos Island through the lagoon via Ifako until it became blocked and abandoned. Opening up same will not only ferry commuters to and fro Lagos, but also help ease flood in Ojota, Mende, and Bagada area. I don't want to remind him of the CMS to Ekpe before he go say that they ask for too much. But I still ask Sha, I hope he understands. But seriously speaking, considering the man are wasted in traffic in Lagos by residents and commuters alike, being an aquatic state, the possibilities derivable from dredging and opening up these water channels cannot be quantified. Lastly, while I praise the governor for doing more of listening than talking, I urge him not to relent until Lagos becomes the Venice of Africa in terms of water transportation. For we don't just set out to look for fault lines in government activities, we also look out for areas where they have made remarkable progress. While we give knocks for the former, our kudos are only reserved for the latter. Mr. Babajide Sawolu, you have earned my kudos on this. But before I go, let me use this opportunity to congratulate my friend and brother, Justice Raman Oshodi, on his elevation to the bench by the Lagos State Government. My Lord, as your lawsuit pleases. Ah, okay, so this, I think this week all of us have come to praise Lagos for one thing <laughs> or the other because, um, well, the truth about it is the, the reason we criticize so much in Nigeria is we hardly find things to praise the government about. True. And to be fair to them, right, when they do well, then it's right to also commend them and encourage them because what we want is a better life, you know, not just to be seen to criticize. So we're happy for the dredging. Me, I know go join that boat too. <laughs> yeah, I don't no, but do seriously, yeah, I know they before you steps in, uh, seriously, for me, going to a papa these days, it's easy for me. I take a boat from CMS, to I can go to a papa from CMS five times a day and back. But because I just take your... a boat from there, eight minutes I'm in a papa, do whatever I have to do, take a boat back, and then I drive home. Unlike those days that I have to stay in traffic, driving from Bagada to Apapa. So for me, just like going to Venice and you see, we I'm... want to use the same water. Venice. Venice is not Nigeria. It's not Lagos. Oh, yes. I was just going to say that you are such an audacious dream. Very tall dream. No, but we can achieve it if we, we can, can dream it. We can actually. You yeah. can achieve whatever it is you yeah, do. Yeah, I, I met a guy yeah. in Sierra Leone. There's a Nigerian guy. I think his name is Gaji or something like that. That's what he does. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, and he has his um, factory somewhere around the bay where he builds the boat himself. Yeah. And then he takes them down to Sierra Leone. So, you know, once you drop at the airport, uh, you have to cross water. But yeah. if you have to go by road, it's a longer route. So the guy actually build the boats and then he I think the president actually gave him the license. Oh, really? Yes, he does. I think he has more than 40. And then he conveys people from the airport down to town. Oh, and that's okay. what the guy does. Okay, so it's possible. Yes, we know, but it would take political will to make it work. Yeah, you, you know everything in Nigeria is politics. I that, that's another thing. I, I remember a very sordid tale. Sorry, Chuka Chuka wants to Chuka um, yeah, I was just um, going to add that um, the boats that Ambode bought mm -hmm. are still not being used. The problem with Nigeria is not even so much not wanting, not knowing what to do, but politics actually blocking yeah. things. Yeah. If it wasn't that they, they would have had nothing to do, they wouldn't have released those buses that have now helped Lagos quite a bit. Yeah. Because we're more interested at first in, in, in getting Ambody to jail for presumably increasing the cost of the buses. <laughs> so I don't know what has happened now to the boats. 
Well, is... and while we talk about the boats, I, I mentioned it, I think, a few weeks back. At Lagos, they should remember the blue rail as well. Yes, yes, yes. They should yeah. remember. So we use this opportunity to also say, I wanted remember to tell that. a tale of how the boats colla um, capsize. capsize on our... You were inside? No, I wasn't. Uh -huh. My yes, was. <laughs> our <laughs> boats <laughs> capsize. And we always have... Um, we, we have them pretty regularly every year. Because um, one of my producers lost her mom that way from CMS to Ikorodu. They never found her body till today. Oh, yeah, but so, I, I agree, accidents happen even on our roads. No, it shouldn't be. We, not we, as no, often. No, but it shouldn't it is, happen that often. See, let me tell you why I, I, I'm, um, I'm, um, I come from a riverine area. And I, so I understand the importance of river, uh, water transportation. Do you know that from Lagos to Saple by, by boat, ordinarily won't take you An more hour. than two hours plus. Okay. Lagos to Port Harcourt, mm -hmm. you can assess Lagos to Port Harcourt by water. Yes. You can assess Lagos to Calabar via water. Yes. So why are we so fixated on the roads that are not motorable, on flights, and then we abandon the, the other one that uh, nature has given to have us? Have you considered the pirates also? I agree. That it, it's all, it's all yes. part of it. Pirates. That's why for me, if you... If you if you can dream it, there are steps you need to put in place to ensure yeah. security is one. You need to also dredge some of... Why are we so... Look at the Lagos port, for example, congested. But yet, you have Calabar port, you have Port Harcourt port, yeah. you have Onicha. I said earlier that it's political will. It's yeah. just political. It's, it's the That's work of those in governance to make sure that this thing... So since you know, it's political will, Chuka is calling on Africa to wake up next. But before then, let me use this opportunity to say happy birthday to one of our own, Bolahan Olojede. Thursday was his birthday. And um, happy birthday, uh, Bolahan. And Chuka now, over to you. Africa, my Africa. The poem by David Diop, who died in 1960 at 33 years. I became aware of this piece when I was a student at Federal Government College Wari in Nigeria in the 1970s. Africa, my Africa. Africa of proud warriors in ancestral savannas. Africa of whom my grandmother sings. On the banks of the distant river, I have never known you, but your blood flows in my veins. Your beautiful black blood that irrigates the fields. The blood of your sweat, the sweat of your work, the work of your slavery. Africa, tell me, Africa, is this your back that is unbent? This back that never breaks under the weight of humiliation. This back trembling with red scars and say no to the whip under the midday sun. The grave voice answers me. Impetuous child, that tree, young and strong, that tree over there, splendidly alone amidst white and faded flowers. That is your Africa springing up anew. Springing up patiently, obstinately, whose fruit, bit by bit, acquires the bitter taste of liberty. Now, Diop belonged to an informal group of Francophone Africans that included Leopold Seda Senor, who would become Senegal's president. Their quest was known as negritude. Senor defined negritude as the sum of the cultural values of the Black world as they're expressed in the life, the institutions, and the works of Black men. Now back to the poem. Diop, through this writing, preferred an Africa, which while removed from the shackles of colonialism, grew to accept a new world order. One which absorbed external influences positively, but kept the very foundations of Africanness. He was a realist, as were those who adhered to the principles of negritude. In effect, a forerunner of the more recent movement of Afropolitanism. What I love most about these ideological and intellectual movements is that they formed a good recipe for a future prosperous Africa. They continue to be even more relevant, even present. They appear to describe our situation now. Young Nigerians, please revisit the works of those freedom fighters for inspiration. Teach the meanings and messages to your people, to those in rural areas, to the uneducated, those who aspire to political careers without sound ideological foundation will do well to take a step back and learn first. 
or we will continue to end up with a sort of precedent, legislatives, judiciary, public service, and private sectors run by half-baked professionals. We must cease to see Nigeria as a cat cow. We must approach things from an intellectually stimulating viewpoint. Of what use is education if we subvert its good qualities for stolen money? Why do we destroy educational institutions? Has the army been responsible for the failure of education in Nigeria? Can we not rise beyond this and reinstate our institutions to offer courses of global standard? What ideologies push today's Nigeria? Did we sink the moment a 32-year-old soldier was placed at the helm of affairs of this nation? I say yes. 2023 is our goal. As some prepare to demonstrate at the Lekki toll gate on Saturday, I give them my support and join in denouncing the directionless government of Major General Buhari. We need clever and intelligent people in government. We, we need, need clever, clever and intelligent people in government. But will, will, um, are we truly ready? to allow clever and intelligent people. God bless us. you, sir. Because I We the so. people. Are we the we people. Ready? Are we ready? Yes, we are not. We the people. We are not they're, ready. They are not ready. Because uh, I asked uh, about too. Bobby Whiney. You're saying, <coughs> Chuka was saying, uh, young people, go and read about freedom fighters. Bobby Whiney is 38, are we? And uh, Museveni is 70, what, 77 or thereabouts. Mm. And I asked, what happened during the elections? They said there are people who are just used to the former president, yeah, yeah. and they actually voted him. Because if everybody came out and voted Bobby Wine, there's no way you can rig election. No, no, but, no but you no, can't but also rule out. The incumbent president will you have can't the rule machinery. out the powers of uh, uh, an incumbent. Uh, but, but, but I think I understand what she's saying. Yes, I do. But uh, this, the country, the, within, what within is the Kuben's, number of the youth, youth, youth in, the youth in, population in, in Uganda? Population in Uganda. Take away Uganda, let's look at Nigeria, where I say we are not ready. We are not ready because last time we talked about Sorosuke, Sorosuke. And now Sorosuke has ended up in social media the way it started. Because, one, even if INEC opens their portal today for continuous registration, we would rather complain yeah. than go to register. Yeah. And then, as we speak now, people are already debating Jonathan, Buhari, Buhari. Atiku, yeah. and Erufai. We are not debating the young Outside ones. Outside those ones. Yes. Uh, and then the young people also, the ones that will uh, you know, fly the flag of some political parties are not even ready to you know, yield the floor for their colleagues. Look at Kinsley Morgalu, Obieze, Kwesili. I'm not calling them young. I'm just saying these Fela are, are they're, they're, Fela they're, they're Toye. fresh. All of them, um, my um, uh, friend, what's his name again? All of them in the 2019 election, couldn't, could, show what, could not even come together to nominate one person amongst themselves. Out of 10. You know? So it, it, that's why when I look at all of this, I say, look. We're not ready. We're not ready. And then I agree with you, Chuka, that because we do not read, if we read enough, I was telling somebody, you know, just last week, that Facebook don't take our face away from book. We and, no you know, it. I remember this poem uh, particularly. In fact, when it was going to start, I remember Africa, Proud Warriors. I remember because you, you also performed this, this. you? Yeah, yeah. You performed these poems yeah. back in school then. And so it's instructive that Chuka is asking for our youths to go back to some of those poems and read, read up about Africa. We're not saying you don't know. I mean, technology has made it so accessible for you to do quite a lot of things. But there, is, there are some basic things that you re really, really need to know. Who is a, a leopard uh, singer? You need to know, you know. If we go and know, are we going to change Africa? Because what do they because do to make our lives better since will then? inspire you. Inspire uh, us to be like who? To, like our will inspire That's you to it. know That's that it. once uh, upon uh, a time, some people also struggled. Yeah, and, they they did not, they, and he didn't do anything I, for I us. Saw, I no? saw a quote today. And someone, someone, someone wrote and said, um, I think his um, um, Tiwa's um, ex-husband, um, he wrote something and he said that if you are a parent and then you are trying to train a, your child the way your parents trained you, you will totally fail. That's because it. this generation has yeah. moved. That's people true. have moved. So you must just learn to but, just move with but the But then time. you can't move. 
without without, without the knowledge of history. But what is government also doing for these students uh, back in school? <laughs> With your, the government, they do your, serve. God bless you. <laughs> no, because it's the truth. What uh, are they Chuka. doing? What are they doing for the students? Chuka, <laughs> which government they do say? <laughs> are they doing anything? <laughs> but, 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 you know, I'm not asking for people to go back and um, copy people from the past because actually I condemned everybody on the Naira notes in Nigeria, every one of them. So, like um, Jumoke, don't call Awolo or near me. You'll be, you'll be making me even more angry. Uh -huh. The so thing is. Scary. That it is the it is the it is those that probably never even made it to power that we should listen to those who continue to speak and write because they never tasted power so we don't know if they would have been corrupted their messages are pure right Jumoke will be looking at living with disabilities in Nigeria are we doing enough this is after the break stay with us. We all know someone with this ability, whether they're family, friend, colleague, or even neighbor. What we may not know well is how they survive in Nigeria. We assume it is difficult, but we just may never really know. Now, this is a topic we shy from. Let me be very honest. I personally assume if I ignore it, it will cease to exist in my world, but they are in my world. If they're family, we lock them up, clothe them, feed them, and never really talk about them like they don't have emotions. If they're friends or colleagues, we help as much as we can, then forget about them as we go on our jolly ways. Now, people born with disabilities actually grow up only knowing their life as it is. But in Nigeria, where accidents are to a dozen, many more people become decapacitated later in life. Imagine losing your sight in an accident. God forbid. Yes, we all pray it away, but accidents keep happening daily. I hear that many disabilities can be prevented from deteriorating if only we act on early signs, especially for people born with them. But for accident victims, what is our emergency response like? Many don't get first aid and eventually lose body parts. Such a preventable dilemma. Let's praise Lagos State in this regard. We have a few responders in emergency situations. The government did try. So I've decided to advocate that we, the people, do more in support. Let's come together to fund more institutions to cater for people with these abilities. Let's acknowledge their emotions, educate them, hold their hands, employ them. I'm not talking of handouts, so. I'm asking that we create a quota for them to aspire to fill in the society and not turn them to beggars. That is inclusiveness in all areas. If you build your business to allow accessibility for people with disabilities, that's more customers for you. It just makes more business sense anyway. But these abilities are usually overlooked by us. We definitely can do better. When you are 100 years with great-grandchildren, it's the institutions that we built that will cater for you to be more comfortable, handicapped or not. Do you commit to help? I commit to help. Uh, I will help in the best way. It's not a laughing matter, seriously. <laughs> Tell us how. I will help in the best way I can. Um, even people, you know, in Nigeria, even the able are disabled. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So. These uh, disabilities, is it mentally or pocketly or which, exactly. which of them? Exactly what you're saying. Because which of these disability? Because there are different kinds of disabilities. Yeah. Oh, the, la, you let's, nailed it. Yeah. Let's even start from the everyday one that you know. Mm. You know, the you know, physical disability. Yeah. Recently, we had cause to talk about um, the access to courtrooms. How can our disabled people access courtrooms? Mm. That is in the hallowed chambers of uh, the judiciary, which is the last hope of the common man. You know, you find out that when we even build our houses, we do not have them in mind at all. Yes. Yeah. At yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, 
And but yet you find out that the world these days, even where they are preventing accidents, they are creating opportunities for them. Thank In you. some organizations, if you we believe that when you just put signs for car parks for disabled people, that's okay. all. You've done, you've done, you've done, you've done a lot. You know, even the banks, don't have cancer. nothing. Our public institution is worse. Go to federal secretariat. You'll be asking yourself. So if you have a disabled worker, how will you climb up? This how will you assess the building? Mm -hmm. Nothing. So we are not, and, and that's for the physical di disabled people. Then I talked about the, those who are disabled but able. The society does not enable you at all. And so you find out that you that have little, you're having to even help those who are mm -hmm. able. They don't have jobs. They have to pay rent. They need to send their children to school. It's, you know, so every day you see, we do GoFundMe, we raise funds for one project, one thing or the other. We need to consistently remind government of their responsibilities. Well, it, I meant okay. to tell you. Oh, okay. Yo, let me uh, allow you. Let okay. me allow you. You know, um, I, I had a program recently. The guy that talked about the airline that refused to take him from Abuja to Lagos just because he's disabled. Uh, he's the man living with disability, let me rephrase. And they said that because um, he's using wheelchair, they will not let him in to the aircraft. Yes, um, an airline. And then he went berserk, he was really mad, he broke their systems. and wow. did not, Yes, he was really, really mad. And it, it trended on social media. And then I spoke with him. And, um, and this person is not a small boy. Permit me to use that word. Yeah. He's not a small boy. He is not. He is rich. When we're talking money, he has money. And internationally, he's recognized. Yeah. CNN and all of that. So he's not a small boy. So he was, he was lamenting, he was complaining that why will the airline, so if they can do that to me, what will happen to other people and Who all that? Who do not that? even have yes. anything or anybody. Do you understand? So, and then when you go to offices, just like you said, they don't even consider it that it's important no, for no, you it's to not. make the place conducive for people living with disabilities. More no. accessible. To yes, people. accessible. It's difficult. Let's go yeah. to Chuka. I'm still waiting to re um, reply to a comment that was made on Instagram on a post that um, um, a, 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 about disability, people with disability and their access to buildings and all that. Somebody asked uh, a question on Open House Lagos um, uh, page on Instagram. Um, and yes, we're failing. We have actually failed already, um, but we're trying to ensure now that we sort of claw our way back. Uh, past generations didn't care. So I wouldn't necessarily, you know, put down the architects for not caring as such because they're part of a generation that were brought up not to actually care. But um, now it's part of an ongoing discussion and it will improve with time. It's going to improve very slowly because Nigeria is actually, to, uh, we've gone too far the other way to come back to look after the disabled. We've gone very, very far. Um, um, there's a law okay, in Lagos. So, so, so let me quickly chip in that um, recently I mentored two people who wrote about how we excluded those with disabilities during COVID. Mm. So while everybody was on lockdown, this set of people were not really factored in. Some of them could not, including sickle cell, uh, um, people yeah, living with sickle true. cell, they could not, you know, access healthcare, they could not feed and you know, the largesse, the palliatives, they had no, uh, no, ah, nothing. They want that. Uh, even the you able could get palliative, don't yeah, talk about that. That's the thing. Yeah. So it, it, the government itself has a, it has a lot to do in yeah. leading the pack to the commitment you're asking for, um, Jumoke. If yeah. the government gives them a pride of place, already I like what we do, because when you see a politician or a state's, um, uh, events being done. You see the language people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so we've done well in that. Let's, let's just acknowledge that. Improve. But we need to do more. So we're starting the conversation. We right. all have to just put it on the top of our minds. But, but quickly, I want to ask so that all those we language, have to round up yeah, this all, conversation. All those language sign people, sometimes I wonder if what they are actually doing is what is you only when you will not this know. For another day. <laughs> Esteemed viewer, your contributions are integral to this program. Please keep sharing your thoughts on everything we discuss here. These are some of your comments from last week. Responding to the advocacy on the awareness of the president, Fajemi Ayobami says, a country blessed but cursed 
If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, change their ways and call on me, I will heal their land. The Bible says, have very, O oh Lord, the silence is loud. On the advocacy on, le on electricity, J.R. Tim says, the discos used government to stop the rate at which people pay for prepaid meters because it is at their detriment. Since December, how many people have they given meter? But the IKEDC and EKEDC are given ridiculous, crazy estimated bills every month. Allow those who want to pay, pay, and allow people that can wait for free to do so. Please follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. After the break, you will be outlining how corrupt you all are as a people. But if I may ask, yo, aren't you corrupt as well? After the break. <laughs> In May 2002, President Obasanjo recovered $1.2 billion from the loot of late military dictator General Sonny Abacha. In November 2003, $149 million uh, looted was also recovered from Jesse Island. In September 2005, $458 million was recovered, plus $2 billion in assets. In 2007, the Nigerian finance minister at that time, Nemadi Usman, confirmed the recovery of $2.5 million. In 2014, Okonjiwala confirmed the return of $500 million. In June 2014 also, another $480 million. In 2016, Switzerland confirmed returning $723 million so far to the Nigerian government. All proceeds from the General Sonny Abacha loot, which, as believed by many Nigerians, have been relooted. A couple of other presidents succeeded General Sonny Abacha before now, most of whom are still alive. But it does appear that um, no, corrupt, no corruption-related allegation has been associated with them. Uh, for now, maybe for now, if I may add, as um, they are still alive, shall we? They are still living. Corruption has, over the years, become so synonymous with public office. And today, corruption remains among the major challenges of both developed and developing countries across the world. Corruption is a phenomenon that has a damaging impact on every aspect of the social and economic performance of a country. It leads to inefficient allocation of public funds, um, significantly lowers the quality of public sector services, and deprives people of access to basic public services. When citizens deal with public officials in Nigeria, bribery is significantly more likely to occur. And that is the reason that at the mention of corruption, all eyes looks at the direction of public office holders. Transparency International in their Corruption Perception Index recently ranked Nigeria as number 146 out of 180 corrupt countries across the world. We try, at least uh, we try. In Nigeria, corruption is viewed from the prism of private seizure of other state resources by few affluent individuals controlling various um, seats of power. I want to ask, what if Corruption is defined as anything that inflicts pain on your colleague, your neighbor, your society, your organization, or your country. Will that ring a slightly different bell of clarity? Okay. 
what other word best describe you who play your way into position and you and I know that you are not qualified for? Or you that um, demand extra money for a job you are paid salary for? What about individuals and businesses who pay their way out of the authority after being caught with substandard products meant to be sold to innocent, unsuspecting masses. It does appear after all it does appear after all that corruption is corruption only when it does not favor you. Because to the man who bags huge stack of um, hard currency, it is either blessing from God or simply good business. Anyway, it is my hope sometimes that um, the stone thrown in the market hit the mother of the thrower just to pass one simple message across to the other side. In recent years, youth-led protest movements have erupted around the world demanding honest governance and seeking to change the age-old narrative. And it is my hope that Africa's most populous country is not just watching from the sideline and remaining an icon of corruption. It is important for youth to open the doors that lead to the storehouse of all palliatives of good governance for a greater good of all Nigerians. And in conclusion, not just the government. Majority of the masses are corrupt. Most Nigerians don't really hate corruption. They only hate the fact that they do not benefit from it. And true. Very true, sir. Spot line. This one even hits home. Uh, be, if you, the day you benefit from corruption, you go for Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Um, it is when you don't benefit from it, um, you begin to complain. That's that you why. throw the stones. Yes. Oh. And that's why I don't, I've never really seen anybody who is given a... Um, you know, opportunities, and they know that this opportunity, there are um, inherent, what you call, uh, talido minds mm -hmm. <laughs> that will um, test you and you know you compromise. They would go for Thanksgiving first. Somebody rigs election, and then he's, you know, fraudulently sworn in. He goes for Thanksgiving. The rest of us will join, Your Excellency. Yeah. But the so, day he's removed, we say he was corrupt. So what you is saying, really, is that Nigerians themselves yeah. are corrupt. Yes, the day we will don't want it, it will stop. True. Don't the leaders come from, from us? They are not Ghanaians or Togolese. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they are Nigerians. A, 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 a boss of mine was called to MC an event. And then they told him, he told them, okay, my fee is six million, um, including my flight and um, hotel. And then they said, ah, no, bros, no money now. No, we'll pay you three million. He, he ignored them. And later, someone else now called him and said, bros, now me, now, now our office, now we didn't in charge. Eh? Bros, I beg, just take the thing like that. I beg, just take him. He said, okay, you guys will take care of my flight and all the stuff. Because I wanted to use one million to take care of my flight, my accommodation and all. They said, no, eh, because, because he insisted they should pay him five million. They refused. Now, after the event, they gave him his check. They actually gave him a check of six million. And asked him to return three and million. And told him to return three million. He refunded one million because he told them, that I don't tell you now before, my fee originally now, five million. The one million already on top, I won't use them to take transport and logistics. And then the guys were actually angry. Yes, no. Yes. Why would you be angry? Of ah. course, because they, needed, it is they needed their kickback. You're yes. talking about government. <laughs> that, this this one, one is not even government, this is private. See, ch church. The thing. Church is a church buying land. A church buying a land. And then the pastors negotiating. And then they come, they mark up. They will say, uh, they will negotiate you down, and then they mark up the ass. And then there was one, the transaction was almost selling through, but because of their greed, they refused to include some other persons. And then? Uh, Chuka, <laughs> how is it in London? Is it the same with the way we are feeling it here, even though you are not on a corruption perception in this? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not the same. Oh. They, are, they have a bit more sanity here, you know. I'll just, um, I'm, I'm not sure it is that all Nigerians are corrupt and, and that it manifests when they're given the chance. 
Because I think I've had more than enough chances to be corrupt, and I'm still not as I speak. Uh, I've had every opportunity. Some have been actually laid right by me, and I have, you know, I've moved past them. I'll be a much richer man today if I was corrupt. Much, oh, you are rich. I wouldn't even say I'll be a much richer man. <laughs> I was going to say that I would be very, very rich. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think that um, the, the temptation is there when you join a gang of thieves. That's really what it is. A lot of us are not really corrupt or don't want to be. That's but true. you get into the wrong... It's like getting into the wrong crowd. The moment you're accepted where this thing is going on, you don't realize when you're forced to start behaving like them. So, um, yeah... Sometimes it's the society that changes right. you. Thank you so much, Chuka. Influences you. Thank you, Chuka. All right, we'll, we'll just go on a quick break. Um, then when we return, Treasure takes us on the journalism and its um, practitioners. Um, join us again. That bill to protect journalists matters arising. It's worrisome times for the journalism profession in Nigeria nowadays. In two weeks, two journalists have been kidnapped in Abuja and Port Harcourt. This is deliberate targeting, which is a grave development. I've seen a mild campaign by individual journalists to correct the notion that journalists are rich people. Now, here's my appeal. Journalists are regular people like everyone, the majority of whom are barely getting their monthly salaries. Stop kidnapping journalists. So today I look at the reports by Benneth Joshua of the Daily Independent newspaper on the bill on the protection of journalists being debated in the House of Representatives. Otsa Agbo, a lawmaker in the House of Representatives from Benway said, and I quote, most people feel that once you are jobless and you can afford a jota, pen and a midget to record voices, you can automatically apply the profession of journalism and such people go about blackmailing people, especially public servants, as well as assaulting democracy and its sacred institutions. He has therefore sponsored a bill, the Press Council Amendments Bill, which enters second reading upon debate as the National Assembly resumed plenary. The bill has three main purposes, to protect journalists against non-payment of salaries, to seek minimum academic qualification for journalists, and to get stiffer penalty for quirks. Now this comes with mixed feelings for me, as a journalist, that the House of Representatives will debate on how to improve the welfare of media professionals, sanitize the media in Nigeria, and protect journalists against non-payment of salaries is noteworthy. But they will also define who a journalist is and raise the minimum qualification for journalism practice and stipulates stiffer punishment for quirks. Interesting times are here. The sponsor of the bill, as I said earlier, is the Chairman House Committee on Narcotics, Drugs, Ota Agbo, representing um, Ado Ogbadigbo, Poko Federal Constituency of Benue State. He took a swipe at regulatory bodies in journalism by stating, and I quote, regulatory bodies like the Press Council, NUJ, Guild of Editors, Newspaper Proprietors Association, at best, can only bark without biting. This has prompted some critical thinkers to now say, journalism is not a profession, but a mere trade. Really? The lawmaker also stated that in Nigeria, journalism is the only profession assigned specific responsibility of holding government to account based on Section 22 of the 1999 Constitution. Yet, it is the most bastardized, a free-for-all profession with no clear qualification guidelines. And that's so true. And this is a second indictment on the regulatory bodies. He says, and I quote again, less noble professions are well regulated and respected. So why should journalism, the profession beyond compare, remain an all-comers affair in this century? Now that is a third indictment on regulatory bodies. I find it curious that the legislature, to use the words of the lawmaker, wants to redefine and refine the media industry so that they can strengthen democracy. The question is, 
what precisely are the functions of the NUJ, Nowatch, Guild of Editors, Newspaper Proprietors Association? I don't understand. Um, I, feel very offended. I feel very no, offended. No, see. How see, many years of read me. journalism? It's an no. art. It's a science. The science no. of journalism is different. <laughs> no, see, let me tell you. Um, the the um, lawmaker is on a journey to nowhere. <laughs> I'm telling you frankly. He's on a journey to nowhere. Do you know why? The world is dynamic. The earlier we embrace the dynamism, the better for all of us. Even media practitioners these days would rather, even journalism, they employ you, just take you through a few tips of it. They don't want, they, there are areas they want you to play in. We agree there are different taxonomies of journalism and you know, all of those things. But there are areas they just want you to play in and they train you in that area and boom, you are good to go. So quickly, secondly also, the idea of social media has come to stay. Even the media houses recognize the fact that there's this, what you call the eye reporter, the eyewitness reporter. And so- Which is citizen journalism. Yes, citizen journalism. Thank God you use the word citizen it's journalism. citizen journalism, yeah. So when lawmakers sit down, even the laws that we have already, how well have we, have, have you strengthened the institutions to be able to enforce those laws? That's the place we should start from. And Thank not you. making new laws and then blaming regulatory Which bodies as if they don't know what they are doing. How well have you provided institutions to enable them to strengthen it? Nothing. Then you make another law, you pride yourself as, yes, I introduce a bill in the you house. You just don't want to sit in the house and just be collecting 15 million per month now. You have to share do something. Because journalism has always been an all-commerce affair. Mm -hmm. We have uh, legal affairs in journalism. You have um, environment. You yeah. have airports. Entertainment. You have uh, Entertainment. medical. Yes. Every Everything. area of life. Yes. You know, and you it's want correct. experts in those areas. You know, to be the ones to present. So we have always had and social media. Aside from being uh, making everyone with a smartphone now a journalist. journalist. Is the fact that a we're, reporter, we're, not a journalist? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a reporter. Yeah, a reporter. I, 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 I a reporter, yeah. not a journalist. No, so it means that you don't even need a media house to publish yourself <laughs> now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So you, know? you are a reporter. You are not a journalist. So we mix it up. You're you know, a blogger. You're you are, not a reporter. Exactly. Somebody comes and says, "I am an OAP. I'm not a journalist, but I'm an OAP." What's the meaning of that? An on air personality. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no. No, but it's, you know that's also possible. Yes. Okay. It's acceptable. Yes, because it's, it's possible. I, it, it was an American yes, coinage. Yeah, 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 it was an American personality and they your was, radio. It was an American coinage to distinguish. Wait, let me let's let's out. It was an American coinage to distinguish the on air personality from the journalist. Journalist, radio okay. presenters. So, yeah. and um, you are a presenter, you are not a journalist, but. You know, there's need for you to have a name. How do we describe this person? Yeah. Who but is not a journalist. Who is not a journalist, but is presenting, presenting a yes. program. You know, just the same way we say you are reporting, you are an eye reporter, but you are not a journalist. journalist. There are people, you don't expect me now because I, I, I appear on programs and then I say I want to go and join the Guild of Editors or oh. uh, Journalism and all of those things. Guild of because they, I, they, they will not accept me because yeah, there are, you don't have the there are qualifications True. I must pass, pass through. through. True. So that doesn't mean that they don't know what they are doing. They understand the dynamism of the profession. Yeah. And so if you cannot, by, by law, fiat. say I want to, by fiat, regulate everybody. There are some lawyers who will say, look, I'm okay by reading law. I don't want to practice. practice. All I just need is the knowledge of it to do my journalism work. Yes, exactly. So it is when they now want to practice that the body of MBA and the body of benchers will say, okay, there are positions that you must go through. So Thanks, Lib. You, you've, you've capped it. You know. Chuka, well, let's hear from your first. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go to Chuka okay. in London. <laughs> Chuka. Are you, are you a Pointeous <laughs> governor? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think that um, there will always be um, a big problem with this whole journalism and everyone trying to be a quack journalist and all that. 
um, social media is here to stay. So I think what it is that journalists really have to reinvent themselves because they must have within their training what they could do to move to the next level and leave us behind as the pseudo journalists that we are. Okay, but then for me quickly, let me quickly say something. Uh, another thing, he said something about um, um, reinventing. No, 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 I wanted to say that, but because of time, um, it's also very important that um, um, organizations, when you employ journalists, be for the print and all that, please, their welfare is important. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, that's true. It's important. Hit it on the head. Yes, tell let them, them. Let them. Let them. Let them. There, 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 there is. Uh, I, I know a few of them. And then any time they see me, ah, eh, eh, Bawuni, eh, eh, your one confirmed brother, one confirmed senior brother. And then I just keep asking myself, one confirmed senior brother, one confirmed senior brother. For, it's yeah, actually criminal yeah, for you the, to employ anyone and not give yes. them Yes. Yeah, so I nice. think just like, just like um, Barrister Shoma said, the other laws that we have, they should do something so about it. Them, do yes. implement those ones. Let us know that you are paying them their salaries. You are paying them their pension. You are paying them everything due. And the, some of these attitudes will definitely stop. And also, um, don't also forget political in some of these things that we yeah, do. Yes, yes, don't yes. forget the political Yo, angle. You mean Just brown like envelope is stopped? No, 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 brown envelope. I don't want to say we'll not stop, but I've done hand like this, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but quickly, quickly. Okay, there is a case, and then you need to report it, and then you get instruction from above and says, no, don't report it. That's our client. Or that's or guard the top. Mm. Don't mention it and all that. And then they, they square your brand envelope. Case closed. That's How it. do you want me to report? How do and you want then, me to work? And then the man who is on the social media now comes on comes social media and, and reports it. And reports it. And you say, no, no, no. No, you uh, are not like, a journalist. You, you, should you, should you shouldn't the report it. The law says man. you are not a journalist. The man didn't call himself call himself a journalist. He just said he was reporting. Interesting. Interesting. What we thank you for your attention while the program lasted. We hope our conversations resonated with you and that in some small way encouraged you to contribute to your immediate environment. Little drops of water, they say, makes a mighty ocean. Don't forget the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you can go to plustvafrica.com slash theadvocatingg. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time, on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. See you next time. Bye-bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.